Mike Irwin. Uh, what I'm going to show you today is how to create like a rhythmic gated effect using the noise gate plugin in Logic and uh, how, how to also make like a stutter slash glitch type of a sound with it as well uh, but in a slightly different way. So um, we'll start with uh, an instrument track here and I've, I've just put ES2 here with a pad loaded up. Um, it's good for the example but it's really limitless as far as possibilities um, what types of sound you can use it on what kind of effects you can create um, but for now this will work just fine we'll go create a MIDI region four bars and what I'm gonna do is just block in really fast some chords <laughs> sound you know it's kind of got a sweeping motion to it I think that kind of works really well with this kind of a technique but so simple just chords blocked in now what we're gonna do here with this noise gate plug-in is we're going to tell it to open and close the gate on the sound um, via a certain input signal and the way we give it that input signal is right here where we've got the side chain uh, input you'll see we've got really nothing there to choose from but I'm gonna go over here and get like I said any source will work for this um, if you're already writing a song and you've got a certain kind of groove going you can just pull up a, a drum kit and and bang out something that goes along with the song but since this is just an example I'll just grab a quick Apple loop and yeah that'll work it's got a nice little hi-hat detail in it okay and let me loop this Now we don't necessarily need to hear the beat in this, but now that we've thrown it down on a track, you can see I can now choose it as the source for the gate. So I'll go ahead and mute the beat because it'll still work on the gate. Now you see our activity light here. You can see that the signal's coming in, but there's not much happening. Um, that's going to be, and I'll tighten down the release and the hold and the attack for right now though I'll probably adjust them later and uh, I'll go ahead and, and not have that low cut crank down on the on the input signal um, this right here your threshold is really where you're gonna have most of the detail come in and out of the gate pattern um, it you know you're basically deciding whether you're grabbing just the peaks of the signal or you're dipping way down into it and getting more of the lower frequencies in it as well um, I'll show you here I'll play it see way up here there's nothing coming through but as we come down into it we start to grab some peaks see that's getting that nice gated effect we're looking for and it's really detailed you're grabbing all the little hi-hats and the beats too and since it's kind of a pad sound you know we want it to be kind of smooth we can use the attack and release and hold here to smooth it out a little bit so it's not so choppy Also notice that that it's it's the gates opening all the way and closing all the way uh, this reduction slider right here we can leave more of the chords in and well I'll just play it and show you see 
see all the way up there solid. So right there is a really nice setting for a pad type sound, but you may choose a different setting for different types of sounds. Um, another thing that I like to do on something like this is just throw like a stereo delay on it. Not a real aggressive delay, but something that's, you know, the, the output mix turned down a little and not a whole lot of feedback, but something just to kind of give it a little bit more um, atmosphere and close that. So that's pretty nice. I mean, that you know, you can leave the beat in or not or match it up to a completely different drum beat um, to play off one another, but um, that's pretty quick and simple. So, you know, what else can we do with this? I mentioned a stutter, kind of a, a glitch type um, approach as well, and I'll show you what I'm talking about there. I'll get rid of the delay for that, and I can use the same noise gate. I'll turn these all the way down for that. And I don't think that it works very well on, on pads like this, so I think what I'll do is just delete this region and pull up our ES2 and going to use the uh, an audio track for the signal here what we're going to do is we're going to make our own pattern and go in and get a software instrument and really you're just looking you're not looking for sound here because we're not going to have sound uh, in our mix from whatever we choose but we are going to look for something that's choppy something that's got a really you know snappy attack and a quick you know, get out of there, decay, um, something like a drum. So, yeah, just a bass drum. So what I'll do is I will create a MIDI region here and And you can see right now I've got the division set to 16th notes, so what I'll do is um, pop in a few of those. That's too long. Okay, popped in a few sixteenth notes. We'll take the resolution to 30 seconds now. And come on, zoom in there a little more. And add some there. Make these even shorter. And now we'll go even smaller to 64th. And that's getting hard for me to see. Even smaller. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, that sounds exactly like what we're looking for. Um, but if you'll notice now, when we go back to our uh, track where we've got our bass bass sound on, uh, if we go to the sidechain input here, we don't have it to choose from like we had before when we were working with an, uh, just a straight up audio track. So we're going to go to the mixer and
we're going to create an auxiliary strip okay and the input of that we're going to select bus 1 I'm selecting bus 1 because I don't have any other buses it's it doesn't have to be bus 1 just whatever your next available bus is and on the strip that our uh, that our drum kit is on here what we're going to do is we're not going to use a send we're actually going to change the output over to bus 1 so we're sending that sound through the bus into the auxiliary strip and then we want to kind of create an audio dead end for it we don't want it coming through to our mix we just want it through the bus so we can send it to the noise gate we're going to go ahead and just set no output so that way it really doesn't matter you know what our volumes are set at or anything like that we're not going to hear it but if we play wait go over here now we'll see bus one because we've used it it shows up in the list let me go ahead and put just a note on here Okay, so now when we play, you can see the activity light there. And that's already not a great setting. That's why we play around. Okay. So... get rid of the clickiness of it we, we add a little bit of attack and release that's a pretty good setting but this particular bass sound is not making it basically all the way to the end um, There we go. That's what I'm getting at. So you can see it's kind of a stutter, a little the little 64th notes give it a little glitchy feel at the end. And, you know, like anything else you can play, you smooth it out with a bigger attack and release. That's actually a pretty cool setting right there, I think. Okay, so imagine you know you can do that with any piece of audio you have in your song, any source material you can think of to create the rhythm, uh, to act on the gate, and um, you know, that's pretty much it. So I hope that was a little bit of a useful kit there for you in your arsenal of ideas when you're composing. And um, thanks again for viewing, and uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Come back later. I plan on putting up more tutorials and um, check me out on Facebook. I've got links to my music, everything else up there. Um, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next time.